Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey, here with Cal Jala. Hello. Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Danny Dubs. Boys. We're back, baby. We are. Oh, we've been here for a while. We had a nice <laughs> AMA <laughs> for about three hours. Not everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just did an AMA, which is the most fun shit ever. Oh, it's such a blast. So I love doing it. Uh, yeah. This is going to be a, uh, a fun, fun time. <laughs> so we, we should start over probably no we're great man yeah, this, is, this is great jake's got a new jacket on that's right did you buy yeah. it new i, I just haven't worn it yet i i stole it off uh melissa etheridge's security guard so uh they're gonna come to your window and get you <laughs> dude how are you that fast i am <laughs> retarded jake <laughs> it's a uh i believe it's a for hunters i think it's geared towards hunters oh i think it's uh flame retarded so <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll figure it out. I got a lighter yeah. on me. I'll walk across fire for you, John. <laughs> that was not as quick. No. <laughs> no, I had to set it up three hours ago. <laughs> you like this kind of jacket? It looks nice on Jake. Okay. Not your style, though. Dog, I'm wearing a fucking Harry style sweatshirt. Are you? Yeah. Is that what that is? That's nice. It says, have yourself a Harry little Christmas. My daughter bought it for me for my birthday. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a sweet gift. She is the sweetest girl in the world. Wait up your alley. And it matches your shoes beautifully. Wow, oh, well, you really you, put John. together a nice well, little outfit together. If you're, if you're listening, you should check out the video for Mike's outfit. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. I'll tell you what, brother. There's nothing that can compare to your eyes. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, wow. I love those peepers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider doing a 12-hour ASMR video of you uh, just blinking? Maybe oh, yeah, yeah. We can mic your face? eyelids. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, we could put little... um. Maybe some coins on on them, and they could hear them click. Ooh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> oh man, I uh, uh, no. Jake, I like your outfit too, by the way. But I can't see if your shoes match your jacket. No, they don't. They don't. You uh, look no. like shit. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, you had a uh, your shoes matched your book bag. Uh, that was accidental. But Shoot. their shoes also match a lot of other things that I have. Yeah, they're habanero red. You familiar with that color? I don't, but I would Speaking like to learn more. Speaking of habanero, boy, his, Taco Bell's coming back in my life tonight. I think. Uh, I would his love vest, too. His vest was habanero mm -hmm. down in, oh. uh, mm -hmm. in Florida. Wow. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess it's time to flip the coin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, dude, I, almost like I, we got a great murder tonight. Um, I don't know. There's Potentially. probably a better way to describe that. But there's so many other fucking wild uh, cases going on right now in the world. There really are. There's... Yeah. The fucking unsealing of the Delphi documents, the fucking Idaho college murders, the fucking boy in the box being revealed next week. There's just so much. The catfish talk. state, Virginia state trooper that drove across yeah, the country. Yeah, what a pervert, man. Dude. Lots of shit going There's on. There's so much man. fucked up shit to talk about. It's fucking, I thought it was Robin season. It's a uh, psychotic murder season. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Careful out there. All right, should I flip the coin? Yeah, do it, baby. I saw a couple of new Jokers episodes today that I've never seen before, and boy, do I really want to talk uh, about Oh, yeah, number one fan still hasn't seen six-year-old episodes. Oh, fuck you. I'm going to win. I didn't. I lost. Yeah, fuck. suck my dick, man. Yeah, That's what you get. You Watch the episodes when you come out, number two fan. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out about him in 2021. Yeah, I know. Well, that's that's number two fan behavior, so. That is number two. I hope you fucking enjoyed him. All right. All right. Number now, two is fine. I've never won anything in my life, so number two is just, just fine for me. I bet it is, man. Normally, I surprise John and Jake with the stinker, but I made them aware of who we're doing tonight a little while ago. Actually, they made themselves aware. And uh, we all have some knowledge of this case already. Yeah. It's something that happened close by to us. Where's Ben Salem? What'd you say it was? It's 20 minutes away from 20 here. minutes away from where we, we record. And... I remember hearing about this in 2017, and it was one of those cases where you're just, you're glued to the news. Yeah. It was a national case, got a uh, big, big recognition because it was a f fucked up, weird just, thing that happened. Yeah. Everything about it was fucked up. Um, this fucker had a henchman. He had a wigger henchman, which he looks like he comes from fucking central wigger casting. Yeah. Let's just, you got to drop the name. All right. Uh, talking about none other than Cosmo DiNardo. Sounds like a real fucking fat pig name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that fucking oinker. God damn it. You know what the funny thing was? Like, he used to be very handsome. Was he? He started taking medication for his mental illnesses, and he ballooned. And he blew up. Dog, his mother... All right, let me give you a little bit more background. So, Cosmo was born January 21st, 1997. Young fellow. Wow, he was. Whoa. Yeah. Holy shit. Yep. Or is really young, yeah. Yeah. He was thin. He, he handsome kid. 
was in great shape, but then started taking uh, medication for his mental illnesses and blew the fuck up. In a Philly Magazine interview, his mother described him as the hottest boy in Ben Salem at one point. That is an Italian mother for you. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, that's a contest every year in Ben Salem. At Park there Casino. he is. Hottest yeah. boy in Ben Salem. <laughs> Jake, uh, did I ever tell you that I got drunk with a child beauty pageant MC once? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, you didn't tell me either, by the way. I don't know why he focuses on Jake. I'd love to know this. All right. Um, I have to preface this by saying it's going to sound so much worse than it actually is. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. All right. So I flew to Quebec for a children's beauty pageant. Okay. The reason why I flew to Quebec right for a children's beauty pageant is because my niece was competing in one. My sister and my Aunt Patsy, God rest her soul, left me five grand once. I don't know if I ever told you guys that either. <laughs> First time hearing of it. Yeah. They, they for some reason, they kept entering my baby niece into Hawaiian Tropic child beauty pageants. <laughs> and my niece fucking cruised through fucking uh, the first few heats and made it all the way to Mount St. Sauveur, Quebec. So my dad thought that would be a nice vacation for us, and Mount St. Sauveur is a beautiful place. It's a uh, ski town. It wasn't ski season, though, so I think we went in uh, September. Still beautiful, though. Mm -hmm. So we went up there, and uh, my niece competed in the pageant, and the day of the main pageant, there was like three days of festivities. On the third day, it was a Sunday. My dad and I went to a bar because it was Canada. I was 18. I could drink. Mm -hmm. So my dad and I were like, all right, cool. Let's go have a beer together. Well, we, we had like 15 fucking beers together. Holy Beautiful. Cow. And the guy we were sitting next to also happened to be an Eagles fan. So we're like, oh, man, I forget the guy's fucking name. But great dude. I can't. You remember Harry a lot Callis. of names. <laughs> <laughs> great fucking dude. We were hanging out having fun. The Eagles got their fucking dicks handed to them. There was like mm -hmm. one big play the entire game. Irving Fryer caught a long first down. <clears throat> but that was it. We're crushing beers all fucking day. And I'm not kidding when I say we had like 15 beers apiece. And at one point, the guy finishes his beer, puts his glass on the table, and he says something to the effect of like, all right, let's fucking do this. Leaves the bar, says goodbye. My dad and I finish our beers, and then we make our way back to the hotel, get showered, go down to the child beauty pageant, and we see him walk out on stage in a tuxedo and start introducing children for the pageant. So you didn't get drunk with the announcer, you got drunk next to the announcer. We were kind of together. How many times did you talk to him? Pretty often, because he's an Eagles you fan You didn't too. get that much info. Oh, that was the Eagles fan? Yeah. Okay. I can't believe he wasn't like, oh, yeah, I gotta go announce a fucking child pageant after this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you would- <laughs> Go birds, yeah, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to the story yeah, go of back Cosmo to Cosmo DiNardo. <laughs> DiNardo. What'd you call him? DeLongo? <laughs> Long Cosmo DiNardo. DeLongo in the head -o. <laughs> We should start over. <laughs> no, we're cruising, man. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> oh, man. So he was born in Ben Salem, PA, which is super close to us. And his parents were named Tony and Sandra. They're still kicking. So they're still uh, staunch defenders of old Cosmo. Isn't that a, a, a Italian in. play? Tony and Sandra? Their, their wedding? <laughs> that would be a cool uh, iteration of this. Where you're sitting you eating dinner, experience. yeah, and they're just screaming at their fat Italian son the entire time. <laughs> now, when you say they're still defenders of him, uh, do you mean they deny that he did it, or do, do they? Is the story is their story that he like uh, these guys had it coming or something? I should say supporters because I don't, I don't think they've ever said that he didn't do it, but at the same time, they didn't. Um, they still support their. Son. I think yeah. What what we'll learn in this is that he they, like they they don't blame it on him they blame it on things that happened to him yes that's yeah. the best way to describe it Jake yeah. thank you gotcha so as a child he received numerous concussions playing football Ooh. when he was in grade school he actually received a very nice award Jake he was once named peacemaker of the month well that's irony right there so put that in your left breast pocket what how did you find that information? Brother, yeah. brother, I stay reading. 
<laughs> that is such a fucking win in grade school. Just going through all the accolades oh, yeah. of, of I, grade school. I have a folder in the come basement come of the parents' house. John, I have a friend that MC's child beauty pageants. <laughs> like, this is the kind of information that I have access to. Yeah, true. All right, if you got a kid out there that you need dirt on, let me know, and I'll talk to my buddy, and I'll see what he can find out for you. <laughs> Just a, ch a child private detective? Yeah, if you want to know what kind of awards they got in maybe, say, sixth grade, I know the guy. <laughs> Speaking of uh, child beauty pageants, is it true that your full name is Jean Benet Dalcalo? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he was named Peacemaker of the Month in grade school, mm -hmm. and he received numerous concussions while playing football, Jake, mm -hmm. much like you. Oh, man. Do you yeah. think you've ever had any? You know, I probably. Yeah. Rollerbladed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the gridiron. <laughs> On the asphalt. Yeah, why were you rollerblading on the football field again? <laughs> <laughs> now, between the ages of 14 and 20, the police were called for to the Cosmo DiNardo residence for Cosmo's behavior. An estimated, not estimated, they, it's documented 40 times. She, in six years. In six years. Jesus. Starting at the age of 14. Nice. Now, uh, I remember they had a pretty big property, right? They had numerous properties. Okay. But was it the um, site of the crime where this the cops would continue to come? No. So their main residence in Ben Salem, that's where the police, it wasn't just related to that residence. Okay. It was just related to Cosmo. Like there were times, like for instance, he was pulled over and stopped one time when he had a shotgun. And he was arrested for that because in Pennsylvania, if you're involuntarily committed, you can't own a fi firearm. Gotcha. So he was in possession of that. But- oh. Charges were eventually dropped. What age was that? He was driving, so it had to be... Uh, I think 19. Okay. Oh, so pretty close to... Mike, yeah. With that law, do you know, is there a statute to that? Like, is it like a, like after seven years of being involuntarily... I don't know, Jake. Committed or if you, okay. Yeah. Why uh, you have some potential issues? No, I just, I think that's, that's kind of, that's a cool law. That's all. You, you trying to fucking tread on me, you fucking <laughs> piece of shit? <laughs> Mike, I don't think you should own a gun. The rest of us keep that <laughs> fucking thing on us right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, So what were the other instances? Like the, the cops a lot of like domestic house. stuff. Um, and just yelling at his parents and like freaking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And the neighbors would call or would his family call? I think it was a combination of both because okay. it got to the point where he, w he was unmanageable. Yeah. At one point, this was shortly before the murders actually, his mother refused to leave his psychiatrist's office because his behavior was so aggressive. And she told his psychi psychiatrist, not psychologist, she told his psychi psychiatrist that he's going to kill me if I have to leave with him. Wow. Yeah. Um, so what, she wanted, like, uh, the, the authorities to come and, and institutionalize him right then and there? Yeah, yeah and that, that, that had already goal. happened a, a bunch of times. Yeah, wow. So I think there were five separate incidents where he was he was committed. Okay. And that's, that's a really sad thing, but, like, also, it is kind of funny that... The mom's complaining about his aggressive behavior while nice. not leaving the psychiatrist's office. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like refusing to leave. Doing a, yeah. I wonder where he gets it. No, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Okay, we're, we're dead. You think she folded her arms and stood against the door and was like, now he can't leave. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought, I, so. I thought that was a good yeah. observation yeah. on my part. Yeah. Now in 2016, he was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. And eventually he was also diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but this is the first diagnosed mental illness. And that's the year before yeah, everything popped everything off. Goes off. Okay. Yep. Something else significant happens in May of 2016. He hits a deer with his ATV. Now, all that was reported was that he was in an ATV accident, but we have an inside source who confirmed that it was a deer that he hit on the ATV. Uh, just on... Regular property, like a, a field, the woods kind of thing. So his family had at least three properties. Now, the span of of these crimes, so it covers his parents' house where police get involved, and the actual crimes themselves that he goes on to commit happen at a residence in New Hope, and then there's a farm in, I think it's called Solberry Township. Which is like just... West of New Hope, I believe, right? Like just, uh, I think, maybe 10 yeah, it, miles it's, it's all pretty close to one another. Yeah. And the um, the initial, pro oh, the property in uh, New Hope, I believe, was for, put up for sale last month. And that's where they ended up finding one of the victim's cars, which eventually led them to the farm where he went buck wild. Yeah. And the farm 
in Solberry is where he ended up getting into this ATV accident where he hit the deer <coughs> and he was pinned under the ATV for hours. Oh my God. Among his injuries were a massive concussion. Another one. Another one. Yeah. And then he had multiple comp compound fractures in his legs. Jesus Christ. Yeah, eventually his dad came by, by the property to try to track him down, and he saw what had happened, and they took him to the hospital. Um, was the deer okay? <laughs> what happened to the deer? How many points was it? Was it a buck? Uh, the deer was not okay, so he took Cosmo to court, and he got a little dough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did he play football through high school, do you know? I'm not certain, but, yeah, why the fuck not? Okay, so he was probably fucking getting CTE mm -hmm. from the yeah. time he was a child until two years before he fucking snaps. Yeah. And he's been snapping the entire time. He has. Now, his his mother says that 2016, after the ATV accident, is when his aggressive behavior and just overall nuttiness kicked in the fucking high gear. Mm -hmm. At that point, he started visiting... Uh, a psychiatrist and a psychology psychologist as well, and uh, there was some uh, pretty funny behavior being reported during this time. He, oh, I I can't even imagine how upsetting this must be for an Italian mother. After the ATV accident, what do you think Cosmo started doing, which broke his mother's heart? Started saying no to Sunday gravy. Oh, stop eating his mama's cooking. He did. What? Yep. What a weird symptom. Can you imagine doing something worse to an Italian woman than refusing to eat her cooking? He claimed that she was poisoning the food that she was giving him. He claimed that she was a Russian spy. I remember this information. And he also claimed that his cast, which was uh, protecting his compound fracture, was bugged. That is... <laughs> Yeah, I can see some of the disorders now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Can. But, I mean, do you put somebody in a hospital just for, like, you do, right? No, don't, I don't say, I don't think so. No? For doing this shit? Like, uh, all right, uh, yeah. there's three very crazy thoughts that he's having, and he's having violent outbursts. I feel like you can tell when somebody's going to snap like that, you know what I mean? Like, there's... Obviously fucking signs that you know how like uh, you can get 302 which is an involuntary commitment mm -hmm. um, If you're crazy in Italian, they give you a 302 <laughs> Oof <maron. laughs> <laughs> All right, so in July 2016 his mother is taking him to Abington Memorial Hospital to have him committed because he is just off the fucking chain that's uh, probably like when he graduated high school about, right? Or right after high school then. It's right after high school. He had made it to a semester at Arcadia. Is that a local college? It is, yes. Okay. And he uh, didn't. He just petered out. Um, he was eventually banned from there for going onto campus and wilding out. After he'd already uh, failed out or whatever, yes. he would continue yeah. to go back? He also got banned from his high school as well for doing the same shit. Arcadia, by the way, used to be called Beaver College. Oh, oh. Jake, what a great observation, man. I forgot about yes, that. Yes, that's right. Oh, damn. <laughs> you knew that as well? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why'd they change the name? Because <laughs> me and Jake kept eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike goes to that cafeteria as well. Y'all used, used to go there dressed up as fur trappers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Beaver College, Jake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in Glenside, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's that? Keswick Theater. Part of Philly. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. So, yeah, he's he was not far from home. Did he live on campus there, do you know? Or did he come? Probably here? not. Okay. Dude, he's got it made. Like, his parents, they're just fucking hyper wealthy. I know their their farm costs, I believe, $5.1 million. Wow. Jeez. It's insane. What's it valued out, valued at now? I don't know, Jake. Yeah. Now, that was when they bought it in 2005. Oh, God. So God knows what the fuck it is they now. They paid $5 million in 2005. Doug, they're... Um, Dude, it must be fucking massive. Now, the house that I mentioned, which um, they found one of the victim's cars in, yeah. which kind of expedited the investigation, that went up for sale again last month. The mom had sold it to her daughter for a dollar, and the daughter put it up for sale. And now that home and that property is valued at... Uh, I think it was three quarters of a million dollars. Wait, hang on. Did she actually sell it for one dollar? She did, yeah. No, people do that with cars yeah. too. Wow. Like when you're trying to 
do something nice for a family the, um, member. The tax that you have to pay low okay. because you pay the tax based on the price that you pay. Yeah. So you know maybe a little under the table and with a family like that, they keep it in the family. <laughs> Oof, my own. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So July of 2016, uh, Cosmo's mom is taking him to the hospital to be committed. He knows what's up. Mm -hmm. He's not happy about it. During the car ride, he bites his mother and he socks her. Jesus. Oof. And then it gets to the point where he's still on crutches now. He's still fucked up from the accident. Oh, so he can't like jump out of the car and like. He does that. Oh my god, dude! So after what? he bites and socks his mother, he jumps out of the car and runs through traffic on his crutches and gets in another woman's car and says, "You got to help me. My mother's trying to kidnap me." Oh my god! <laughs> just imagine being that car pulling up and seeing the dude with cast his legs just walking towards you. Just... Imagine being an Uber passenger in the back and be like, "I didn't know this was a shared ride." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's eventually committed, and uh, how did that get resolved? Did the cops have to come? They like, did come. Yeah. They involuntarily committed him, and it was three times over five months where he was involuntarily committed. Dude. And during one of those commitments, uh, he threw a wheelchair at a nurse. Man, he, he really was in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there should definitely be like a three strike rule within a certain amount of time. You think? Yeah, you get like a six month mandatory stay. But here's the deal, though, Jake. If you give a kid that strong three strikes, if he's able to throw wheelchairs, he's going to hit one of those balls out. So what then? Well, no. I mean, I feel like a lot of those institutions are, you know, basically prisons. Mm -hmm. But there are guards and shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they have to be able to stop him from having access to shit to throw. Or do you just yeah. put that person in jail eventually? You can if they're fucking insane, right? Yeah, I guess if you're already committed in a mental institution, you essentially got to fucking kill somebody. Well, I mean, they'll probably just, if you keep acting like that, it'll just dope you up until mm -hmm. you start drooling, right? True. Yeah. That's what I would do. That motherfucker should have been drooling in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a night in a mental institution once. Voluntarily or involuntarily? Voluntarily. It was nice. I liked it. <laughs> you did like a ride along? Yeah. Do a fucking <laughs> Yelp review on it? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was cheaper than getting a motel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I went there for depression and then like, I had a nice day. And by nighttime, I was like, I don't know, man. This was kind of nice. How depressed am I? The next day, I was like, you know what? I think I'm okay. And they're just like, all right, man. We'll fucking check in with your doctor. And they gave me a prescription, I think, for Wellbutrin. Wow. Took it for a little bit. And uh, yeah, it was worthwhile. I liked it. <laughs> do, they, do you have to give them insurance? Can I just go there tonight? I, if I get in a fight with my lady, can I just go stay at a mental institute? I don't know how it is now. I don't think I had insurance then. This was 1999, baby. <laughs> and I went another time for something separate, but I was out later that day. Is that when you, Good for uh, you. Is that when you went up to, <laughs> went up to the car system? That was the first one. Yeah. Yeah, the, sec the second one I was brought there by the police. <laughs> Did you <say> <laughs> they were pretty nice, though. <laughs> Man, you really are going to be in a, on an episode of this one. Uh, no, nah, man, I'm I'm figured out, baby. <laughs> you got all figured out up here, everybody. Yeah, you're you're past your murdering days. Yeah, it's I was, a young man's game. I was so my dad called the cops on me. I was so mad at him for that. Oh, I was like, man, we could have resolved this. You ever forgive him? Yeah, I love my dad. Good. He's a he's a he's a good guy. I did I did. <laughs> Um, when I heard him calling 911, I grabbed his phone and I threw it as far as I could. That's so funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a portable house phone or a cell phone? We were in the street. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> and the cops still came, huh? They did, yeah. Right. Can you hear me now? <laughs> dude, they were, they were very nice, man. Eventually we made it back inside and, uh, there was a lot of cops that showed up. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> They were very sweet, though. They were all, like, listening to me explain myself, like, to my dad. And uh, they're like, all right, well, sounds like uh, you need some help. So they're like, you're not being arrested, but we are taking you to the crisis center. So they took me to Crozier's uh, crisis center. Were you in handcuffs in the back of the car? I was. Yeah, you were arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Cops are liars. Yeah, my they they lie all, the time. <laughs> all right, I was hospital arrested. <laughs> but... Yeah, good guys, man. <laughs> you were, <laughs> I can't even fucking say it. <laughs> no, forget it. Want me to get you started, Jake? <laughs> mm. No, right. no, I was not going to say that. 
I was trying to combine no the words arrest yeah, I know, and resuscitated. No and I couldn't figure out how to say it. Arrestitated? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I kind of was arrestitated. <laughs> all right, back to Cosmo, man. <laughs> so, in addition to all these fucking, um, all these mental health episodes he's having, he is upset about something his dad's doing. Apparently, like, the dad was carrying on with a lady outside of the marriage. Oh, no. He was fired up about that. He pointed an AR-15 at his dad. Jesus. I remember that, actually, in the, in the Philly report. Mm-hmm. Didn't shoot him, but I think just wanted to scare the shit out of him. And on top of that, too, he beat his dad's side bitch's car with a baseball bat. Man, damn. Italians are so fucking Loving. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, though, Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this was, um, this ended kind of funny. November of 2016. It's one of those domestic disputes at the at the Denardo residence. Did the cops come to the AR uh, incident? Ooh, he, that's a great question. Did he negotiated down himself. The only gun incident that I'm aware of is the one where he's pulled over with the, the shotgun. shotgun. Okay. Now there is an incident in November of 2016. They come to the residence because of a domestic dispute. During that dispute, he beats his dad's ass. Then after he's beating his dad, done beating his dad's ass, he attacks his mom. God. While he's beating up his mom, the dad tags back in and hits him in the head with a brick. Holy God. It's like a it's a two on like one. A, came in like a house on fire. <laughs> he sounds like Travis the Chimp. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. And the cops have to come that night, obviously, right? They gotta get him out of there. They do, man. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was probably one of the other three yeah. involuntary and then, Jesus Christ, man. That's when you how many strikes is this guy getting? It's crazy. Is this because his dad's got money? Probably, yeah. God damn. I mean, they've got a ton of money. Like, the dad the dad was worked his fucking balls off. He had a cement business, and the wife had a trucking business. So they were making a ton of money on top of whatever they inherited. And I think most of what they inherited came through property. Wow. So they were fucking cooking financially. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're getting to the, uh, we're getting close. We're getting close, moment, yeah. Right? My yeah. fucking stomach is growling talking about this lady's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Man, could you imagine all the fucking meatballs I got thrown out because the kid wouldn't eat his mother's cooking? <laughs> Dude, I've been thinking about this. Do you think my wife would be upset? All right, if I got an old Italian woman side bitch, not for sex, but for meals. But I, how would you pay for the meals? How would who pay for the meals? How would you, you pay for the meals? Why would I pay for the fucking because meals? Because she's fucking making them for you. She's got to buy the groceries. You're taking care of your side bitch, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I'm nice to her. What? Oh, that's your payment? She needs company. You think she just needs company? I do. She needs money for these fucking meatballs, Mike. How many 80-year-old Italian women do you think are getting fucked? Well, you didn't mention 80, by the way. Yeah, I said an old Italian woman. Like You said like an older... I didn't say anything about fucking the lady. I said pay for the meals. I'm not, I'm not buying you. anything and I'm not fucking anything. No. I'm eating. Mike's gonna go to this isn't a side bitch. This is a fucking um, a mum mum for hire. My, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is big mum mum little grandson. <laughs> Mike's gonna come leave that place with garlic bread sticking out his butt. That's yeah, gonna... that's what I want. Now, do you think my wife would be upset if she walked in on me with like a mouthful full of spaghetti saying, it's not what you think? Depends. Does, uh, does mum mum have anything on underneath her apron? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> she might get upset. All right. Well, maybe I'll wait on that one. Oh, dude, so get this. So Cosmo's mom, she's trying to figure out where all this went wrong. Now, she admits that the fucking ATV accident just fucking set the wheels in fucking hyperspeed. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that and in addition to the football concussions, she seems to think that their house was built on an ancient Indian burial ground. Oh, my God. This lady's a dizzy bitch. Brother... She has a priest named Father Charles Ravert from their local parish come. He performs an exorcism out front of the fucking house. To pull Inside the, the fucking house. out of the house. To pull the demon out of the house. He says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry the wife says, and then uh, Mr. Donardo says that they both heard screaming coming from the basement, and no one was down there. They're able to convince this priest to come over, probably made him a nice meal. Father Charles Ravert comes over, he fucking does all this fucking exorcism shit. And Cosmo's mom swears at the end of the exorcism, Father Charles ran out to the front lawn and started throwing up. That's a good closer. 
That's a good way to end that set right there. That's got to be funny for the neighbors who think they're hearing noise out front. They're like, let me guess, the fucking denoters are fighting again. You see a thrown up priest. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was from a neighbor witness? No, I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, we're. I'm taking their fucking uh, story with a grain of salt. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. yeah. But they swear it's built on an ancient Indian burial ground. And after that is when the uh, shotgun incident happens where he's pulled over in a truck they notice he's got a shotgun. They they run his fucking name, and they find out he's not supposed to have one. He is arrested, but eventually all charges are dropped. And he what? Just does he even stay overnight in jail, or they get him out immediately? Um, he probably got out immediately. Now I will say this: like when he's eventually, I, well, I don't want to say that now. When he eventually gets into really deep dookie, he gets out pretty quickly, even at a million dollars bail. Jesus! Wow! But we'll get to that in a minute. Damn. Hundred uh, grand cash. All right, December nineteenth, two thousand two thousand and sixteen, he goes to see his psychiatrist at University of Penn. This guy, Doctor Kohler. While they're waiting in the uh, on their way up to the office, he socks his mom again. They get into the office, and he's being sexually aggressive toward the receptionist. Thankfully, this woman is separated from Cosmo by a pane of glass. Unfortunately, while he's saying all the sexual shit to this poor receptionist, while she's just trying to fucking work. He starts eating pussy on the glass. You throwing that in, Mike? No, that's real. <laughs> this guy was a little stinker. All right. Yeah, he's a little, little badass. Is there any, did any video of, of any of his episodes ever get released? No. Man. Oh, one thing, and this was just coming up next. Uh, January 20th, 2017. Um, his birthday is the 21st. All right, so the day before the fucking birthday... He sends out a message on Facebook saying, birthday sex, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> and then on his actual birthday, he posts, who loves intercourse besides me? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Still fishing. <laughs> yeah, he's been a little sticker too. So in addition to just posting those publicly, he's also inboxing chicks left and right and just annoying women just for no reason. Chicks that he actually knows, or was it just any random? Person? Some that he knows, and yeah. some chicks that are just random, yeah. and it's like the most like profane shit that you can imagine. Yeah, he's going like full Antonio Brown. At the yeah, oh, dude, yeah, dude. And one of the messages was like he messages a girl saying, "I want to have sex with you," and she doesn't even respond. He's like, "I need to make babies now." <laughs> That's you know what that might work. <laughs> set the set the age range just a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. You might you might get one with that. Now, despite all this. He goes to see his doctor in, in March and April of 2017, and the doctor determines that his bipolar is in remission. Does that happen? That doctor was wrong. Yeah. So he's been diagnosed with depression, bipolar, and uh, one of the notes on his tr on his uh, medical file says possible paranoid schizophrenia, which is, seems... Is bipolar yeah. like a cancer? Like, how does it go in remission? I think it could be dormant. So you may not be experiencing a uh, manic or depressive episode. Okay. You can be off meds and be balanced. And that's one thing about him is he was never consistent with medication. His yeah. mother said that he was either, either, at any given time, it was just, did you take it today? Yes. Or did you take it today? No. So it was a lot of, did you take it today? Yes. <laughs> did you take it today? He's punching <laughs> in the face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> now, during this time where the doctor says his bipolar is in remission, his mother contacts her husband's cousin and she starts saying the Cosmo doesn't have any friends and the father's cousin says, yeah, my son Sean doesn't have any friends. So Sean would be Cosmo's cousin. This wigger kid named Sean Kratz. They are cousins. They are, yeah. they are technically cousins. <laughs> they got matched up on a play date and they were already cousins. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Italians are fucking stupid. <laughs> Dude, fucking Sean Kratz is fucking super wigger. So he's from Northeast Philly. At this point, he's 19. He's already been investigated for attempted murder. Whoa. Damn, I did didn't not, realize that. Yeah, did not get brought up on any charges that he was investigated for attempted murder, though. And on top of that, too, he was shot 19 times. Jesus who, Christ. Who, who is he? Fucking 50 cents? Yeah, right? Got <laughs> you that you got there right before you. Yeah, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> How uh, the fuck did he live... Through that, I don't know, man. He's like 130 pounds too. <laughs> My God, dude! So bless his, his little yeah. wigger heart. Do you know when he uh, 
what age was he when he got fucking shot 19 times? Was it all at once or? Yeah, it was a drive-by shooting. Jesus Christ. He's a, That's, he's a little wigger miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Is that like a Christmas miracle? <laughs> <laughs> You wore a bulletproof flap. <laughs> Fifty used to have those. Yeah, did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I know he used to wear the vest. Mm-hmm. And his uh, his his flap rims were all bulletproof. Wow. Kevlar, baby. Damn. Yeah, dude. The oppies were out there, dude. I thought Kevlar was his friend's name. <laughs> Jake. He was featured on a couple tracks. Uh, one other very fucked up thing about Sean Kratz is that uh, he threatened his nine year old brother with a gun when he was how old. <laughs> 19. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is a meeting of two absolute retards. <laughs> this is like the key master and the gatekeeper. It's like, we do not want to get these two together. It would be very, very bad. Oh, dude. All right. So we're getting very close to when uh, the crimes happen. Dude, they meet. And it happens within six months. Well, they're aware of each other, but it isn't right. until they finally yeah. start hanging out. Yeah. As yeah, it got hot and heavy pretty quick. Young adults. <laughs> yeah. It does. I want to add this about Cosmo before we move on to the very depressing shit. When he graduated high school and when he got into college, he wanted to be either an orthodontist or a Navy SEAL. <laughs> well, he became yeah. a SEAL. <laughs> a gravy SEAL. <laughs> Dude, you need people. You shouldn't graduate high school till you're 25. <laughs> if you're Italian, 18. 18 years, so stupid. If you have any Italian blood, it's 25. I don't know. I want to be on the high seas, or I want to stare into people's mouths for a living. <laughs> what? <laughs> you need to travel yeah. for a year. All right. So July 5th, 2017. Spends a year in Wildwood. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I want to be a lifeguard year round. <laughs> Buddy, you can't do that here. Yeah. I made Italian pilgrimage. Where's that? <laughs> Wildwood, New Jersey. Ever heard of it? <laughs> you guys big Wildwood guys? You know, I don't think I ever went there. Maybe when I was a kid a couple times, but yeah. not as an adult. Yeah, no. I was always a Delaware beach guy. Same. Ooh. Yeah. Slaughter Beach. Ooh, that that's on the bay. Scary. So I wouldn't yeah. count that. All right, well. Fuck you. Actually, uh, you bay piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you old bay piece of shit. Oh, don't call yeah. him that. I know. You, know, I, just, yeah. you went down to Lewis, probably. You made it probably south oh, I did, to yeah. Rehoboth, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know you never went over the Indian River Inlet Bridge. <laughs> you never been that south. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I done did. You ain't never been to Bethany. Oh, <laughs> You don't know. <laughs> no, never been to Wildwood. Yeah, so. I don't think, you know what, maybe he wasn't a Wildwood person maybe he was an ocean city guy <laughs> i like it jake <laughs> I'll, I'll leave now <laughs> all right so july 5th 2017 he starts becoming a uh even worse oh no jake what do you think he does man um even worse yeah it does something that he hasn't done yet but it's gonna really fuck up a lot of people's lives does he eat ass through plain pain glass <laughs> jesus christ jake i know what that motherfucker does he starts flipping weight well, yeah, he, he lures a kid in. He knows a kid who went to the same high school as him, a kid that was a year behind him named Jimmy Taro Patrick, and he says that he can sell him $8,000 worth of weed. Okay. So Jimmy shows up and meets him at the farm that his family owned in New Hope, which is fuck. It's, it's mass. It's 68 fucking acres, this farm. Yeah, that's the one that's $5 million, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking huge piece of land. Yeah, and the house is beautiful, too. It's... It's everything that a fat pig dirt ball could want. God, wish I would have had fat yeah. pig dirt ball's life. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get to this farm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, he's able to lure this kid out and says he's got the weed that he wants. The kid comes out, and while he's there, he's like, uh, "Oh yeah," he's like, uh, "He's like, I want to, I want to sell you a shotgun too." So he gives him the gun to hold. I don't think the thing's loaded, so the, the kid's checking out the gun at that point. He shoots him twice in the head with a twenty two caliber rifle. Just to take the $8,000? He didn't have the money. He had $800. So that's why he killed him? I think he killed him just to kill him. He was going to kill him when he got there anyway. The Yeah, the official version that he gave police was that this kid wanted to buy $8,000 worth of weed off of him. He showed up with only 800 and he told him, he's like, look, the people that I'm getting this off of are not going to be happy. 
he claims that he burned the $800 as well and then still killed the kid. Okay. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I was think that- Sean there for this? No. Okay, it was just the two of them. It's just the two of them, and that's when he commits his first murder. And a big enough piece of land that no one would have heard the, the gun. Yes. Yeah. And didn't he, like, lure him? Did you say this already? Did he lured him off, like, Temple's campus? He was at, like, a party at Temple? No, that was separate. Okay. He actually yeah. got into a fight at Temple, and he got cracked with a bottle. Okay, then maybe that's something. Okay. Yeah. Another concussion, probably. Yeah. He definitely got cut with it. Now, in addition to, like... You know, selling drugs. He also sells sneakers. And when he posts the picture, posts the pictures of the sneakers that he's selling on like fucking Facebook and wherever else he posts his shit on fucking Snapchat, he'll post a picture of fucking or he'll post uh, bullets in the same photo as the sneakers. Uh, <laughs> just to, just to make people aware that. Yes. He's a friendly salesman. Yeah, and he, dude, his fucking, um, his name is written on like this card in front of the sneakers and the bullets in one of the pictures. Jesus Christ. Wow. Stupid fucking. Is, is that such a cardinal sin to like, is that a murderable offense showing up with like less than 10% of the money? For I think that'll get most people killed. I don't know what. I don't think that's is. true. I don't think his version is true. Mm-hmm. I think he just wanted to start killing people. Okay. And I think this. I mean, $8,000 worth of weed is an insane amount. Of weed to buy. Mm -hmm. It's like, it would take you a long time to sell that. You know what I mean? I think that he probably made most of that up. Was there anything corroborating from the other guy's end on his cell phone that it was actually- I I I haven't found it. That much? Yeah. That dude's just fucking nuts. Saying whatever he thinks. Yeah. So, all right. So that's July 5th. On July 7th, that's when his little wigger cousin, Sean Kratz, comes out to the farm. So they set up another kid named Dean Finicaro, who's just another local kid that that Cosmo's aware of, and he invites him over. And I think the plan is to lure him out to the farm, to have Sean rob him. They're planning to lure him by trying to sell him a gun. They're going to have Sean rob him on an ATV and then kill him. So initially, Sean can't do it. The kid comes out to the farm. Sean can't do it. They're like, all right, so let's uh, go into the barn. They lure this kid into the barn, and once they're in the barn, that's where they shoot him. Sean is there. Sean is there. Why could he just, what, couldn't, didn't want to do the ATV plan? He bailed on the... I think he was just apprehensive about killing somebody in the woods. Okay. But, oh, he couldn't be the guy that pulled the trigger. Right, yeah. But once they get into the barn, they both shoot him. Hmm. So now Sean's killed somebody, and fucking Cosmo's killed two people. Yeah. Wow. On the same day, later that same fucking day. And th- you said they were setting him up. Was they were just setting him up to kill him? Yeah. So Sean is also like insane, or is he just trying to be a hard ass, like be a thug life kind of one? I don't guy? know if like Cosmo's fucking lying to him, saying like, "Hey, we're, this kid's gonna have money on him. Yeah. We're gonna take his money and we're gonna kill him." I think Cosmo's plan is to just fucking kill people. Yeah. And you know, I don't doubt that fucking retard Sean Krat- Kratz is doing the same shit, but. It may be more enticing to lure somebody into possibly murdering if you say you're also going to rob them. Yeah. Because Sean doesn't have the same means that Cosmo has. Sean lives in a regular ass row home. Yeah. And Cosmo obviously or doesn't. Not a row home, but just a regular Northeast Philly home. And Cosmo doesn't need to rob anybody, obviously. He's got no. all yeah. the money no. he could ever want. There's yeah, nothing. He, and that's a big part of the problem is, in addition to his mental illness, he has everything he could possibly want and doesn't have a fucking problem in the world. Damn, I didn't realize that um, there were two separate. Or three separate inc- incidences, or was it four separate? No, it was three separate incidents over the course of two separate days. July 5th was the first murder, and then July 7th, there were three murders, but consisting of two separate incidents. Mm-hmm. So this was the first one of that day? Yes, the first one of the July 7th, the second in total. Later that day, Cosmo lures two other kids out for the purpose of selling them weed. The two kids come out, to the same spot where he uh, he killed Dean, lures these two kids out. <clears throat> he shoots them both, and the one kid doesn't die right away, but he is paralyzed. So the kid's apparently laying on the ground, screaming about how he can't feel his legs. I think Cosmo runs out of bullets, so he jumps in his fucking backhoe. Now, earlier that day, they had gone and got fucking gasoline. So... 
he gets in the backhoe and he runs over this kid who wasn't dead yet. So now they've shot and killed a total of four people. He digs a 12-foot grave, puts all the bodies in there, puts the last three victims in... Actually, before he puts them in the grave, he puts the last three victims in this um, this massive container that he referred to as the pig roaster, sets it on fire. Now, while that's on fire, Cosmo and Sean Kratz go to fucking get cheesesteaks. Where do you think they go? They're definitely Geno's guys. Yeah, nope. yeah, Geno's guys. Steve's Prince of Steaks, so good choice. <laughs> wow. Now, Cosmo claims he was so broken An up. underdog. <laughs> Cosmo claims he was so broken up about what they did that he couldn't eat his. Sean ate his cheesesteak, though. <laughs> that is a beautiful piece of information. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so glad I found that. Yeah. Sean did not feel remorse. <laughs> therefore, he is now in jail. They came back. They dug a hole. They used the backhoe to put all the bodies into the hole. And uh, they filled it back in. Now, at this point, all the kids' parents are getting involved, and they're all proactive in, in f- tracking them down. And there's a couple of cop- cops that are really on top of things, and they're looking in the shit, and they're tracking um, cell phone pings. And the first big lead they get is that they're able to track down the one kid, um, Tom Mayo. They find his car in the second... Donardo property, which is the one that's for sale right now. They find his car in he, this shit. He, he met up with them and then got a ride to the um, farm. Yes. Really? Yeah. 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 They met there at the second house and then Cosmo took him to the farm. Yeah. So Tom Mayo's car is found in this, uh, this shed garage thing. And from there, they're like, all right, we're on the right track here. So initially, they arrest Cosmo for the car theft because they haven't found the bodies yet. So they they know that he's involved. Mm -hmm. They They put enough together, yeah, and people, police departments are communicating, in in large part to these two separate officers who are really on top of shit from, I think the one is investigating Jimmy Patrick's disappearance, and the second cop um, is investigating Dean Finicaro's disappearance. They get to the car, they realize Cosmo stole, oh, Dean was a diabetic, or I'm sorry, um, Tom Mayo was a diabetic, so they find his diabetic medication in the car. They know he's got to be somewhere, but they don't know where. They arrest Cosmo for the car theft. Initially, his bail is set at $1 million. They're convinced that they're going to find- For the car theft. Dog, for the car theft. Yeah, all right, so you know that's more than the car theft. Right, yeah. Yeah. However, his dad posts $100,000, so Cosmo's able to get out. Wow. Christ. So get out is, with an ankle, ankle monitor? Was he, like, being watched so he didn't flee? He was. This yeah. was July 12th. Now, by the time July 14th rolls around, they find where the, the pit is with the bodies. That's a week later. No, it's two days later. Oh, two days later. Yeah. Wow. And they were searching that property for a few days, right? Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, it was yeah, a week, week after yeah, the actual murders yeah. to the time where they that's found it. That's insane. Yes. That's good detective. It is. Work. It's it's great police work. Dude, there there was so much ground that they had to cover. They did have a lot of manpower to help out with this. Like when you watch video, you see like um like um I don't know, are they called students or cadets at the fucking FBI Academy? Cadets, you sure. Yeah, they show them searching the property, so they have a lot of resources to find this. Yeah. Okay. And they do when they arrest them for murder, I think they set bail at five million. Wow. You can get fucking bail after killing four people. Don't they I don't usually? Know, dude. Jesus Christ! Wait, did he get bailed out? No, he didn't one? get bailed out. <laughs> the dad was like, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> it must be in my uh, their, um, chef's hat." <laughs> <laughs> so they're arrested July fourteenth, two thousand and seventeen, uh, and November eighteenth, Cosmo pleads guilty because uh, the day before that, that's when Sean Kratz was found guilty. So they offered Sean Kratz a deal okay. if you admit to like what you did. You know, they gave him a deal. It wasn't like a massive deal. It was like, I think they gave him the possibility to possibly get out at a certain point. But Sean Kratz, once he's convicted, he's life without parole. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, Cosmo pleads guilty to all four murders. So Sean... Did Sean get ratted out by Cosmo? How did he even get a... No, he ratted Cosmo out, though. So he got arrested. Actually, no, there there is video of Cosmo explaining everything. And he does throw... Throw Sean under the bus. Right, because so. there's no reason for him to be involved if Cosmo keeps his right. mouth shut. Yeah. Right? I remember him ratting. So they're both oh, ratting on ratting. one another. Yeah. And I think uh, 
I believe most of what Cosmo says. Like, I don't believe the shit about the $8,000 in weed. I think he just made that up. But everything well, they, else. He eventually changed his tune, right? He started to cooperate, I think, more as the uh, well, yeah, he investigation was, went on. He was very descriptive, especially in regards to what happened and where. Mm-hmm. Now, he was a little fuzzy in regards to, like, what the what the motives were. But in regards to, like, who was found where and what transpired to get them to the point where they were, he seemed pretty forthcoming with that. Wow. Yeah, it was three days Three days before Cosmo pleaded guilty is when Sean Kratz pleaded guilty. We pleaded guilty? I'm sorry, he was found guilty, guilty. yeah. Okay. Sean Kratz was found guilty, and then Cosmo pleaded guilty. And when he was found guilty, so because that deal was then off the table, he was screwed then, right? So, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what you got to do. You got to plead guilty. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a... Cosmo? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I mean, you're fucked. Either yeah, way, you are. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there's a there's a really good uh, hour and a half documentary on it called The Lost Boys of Bucks County. Really? I never heard of that. It's great. Like, it focuses mostly on the victims. Yeah. And it gives their, their family side of the story, and they give, you know, pretty detailed you know, timeline of when they last saw their loved ones and, you know, when they started communicating with them, like trying to find out what the fuck's going on and what actions they took to try to set the the wheels in motion to track them down. It was, it was fucked up, man. Very fucked up. Yeah. I remember the week of them, like, looking for the bodies very, um, I, I watched, like, every's on the news every day. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. <clears throat> and you said that uh, he dug like a 12 foot grave. Yeah. And they were, it was like filled with cement too, right? You know, they put a cement truck on it? I thought he, I thought he, one of the bodies was in cement. I don't think so. I, I think, remember something about that too. I think the first victim, his body was, was just put in as is. And the last three were put in the thing that he described as the pig roaster. Okay. That's just, yeah, that's just crazy. Do you think he would have gotten away with it had it not been for the car at the house? I think he would have got caught eventually. Like, yeah, they seem to be insane and a moron. Like running his mouth kind of thing. Right, yeah. 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 And I think the cops were pretty on top of it from every, like, that. They were, yeah. Obviously, it was the first break, but I think it wouldn't have taken long. Like you were saying the cell phone pings? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, they were really sharp with that shit. And on top of that, too, Cosmo had posted a fucking snap on Snapchat saying that he feels like he's going to start killing people at some point. Jesus fucking Christ. What a piece of shit. Happy birthday in jail, you piece of shit. (laughs) Who would you butt fuck first, Sean or Cosmo? Uh, You know, I think I'm going to have to think about it. Jake, you got to go Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the funnier name. It makes for good conversation at parties. You know, I fucked a Cosmo. <laughs> you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Are they in the same jail, prison? I don't know that. That's a good question. They're they're in Pennsylvania though, right? They are, yeah. Somewhere in state. I don't think they are in the same prison because I think when they turn on each other, now it's like I feel like if they would see each other. Well, they could be in different um, areas that would never see each other, right? You're yeah, but I feel blocks. like, isn't it based off the crime you commit is the area that you're in? I don't know. I don't think so. I do know that Cosmo is in a medium security prison, <clears throat> which people were upset about. Okay. Well, that's hmm. that's money right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll be in one of those like low security prisons where he's just like going to Wawa and coming <laughs> yeah. back. He's making toilet and yolky. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, I am getting hungry now. I am starving for Italian right now. <laughs> Fuck, man. It's all those leftover meatballs, like John was saying. Oh, my God, man. I got to find my Italian woman. Should put a Craigslist ad out there. Was, oh, well. Cosmo was the only son, right? He may have had a brother. Now, there was an article where they mentioned a brother going along with the dad to find him pinned under the ATV. Okay. But... In most of what I read where they mention his family, they just mention the dad, the mom, and his sister, Bella. <clears throat> would you, if you had a rich family like that, would you, for lack of a better word, take advantage of them to help you do what you want to do? I don't know, Jake. I'm a man of honor. Yeah. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And uh, as long as my mother was making those meatballs. 
Sounds like he's avoiding the question. Yeah, they, they 100%. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not talking about, no, what are you talking about? I mean, like. Are you talking about for evil deeds? No, not for evil okay. deeds. I mean, for like, just like Making this. a film project. Yeah, doing yeah. this fun thing we're doing. Use you know? your parents' money to yeah, waste probably. their money. Yeah, Why, you wouldn't? Oh, God, yeah, in a heartbeat. I, mean, I'm a, I wouldn't I'm a, do it for I'm going to Facebook message his parents tonight when I get home and like, hey, I hear there's an opening. Uh, are you Cosmo's parents or John's? Because you were pointing at him. <laughs> Cosmo's parents. All right. You point at me? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want you to call Mrs. Del Calo over Facebook Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> and ask her what? I don't know. What does he want to ask her? I want, I want, you want meatballs. I, oh, meatballs. He wants too. meatballs you and want money. meatballs and money? <laughs> yeah. Are you barking up the wrong tree? my rap album right there. <laughs> Her meatballs could break a goddamn window. Oh, my I God. I want a little bit of green, and I'm not talking about pesto, Mrs. Del Calo. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Green? Mo oh, money. money. I'm, I'm, Ooh, <laughs> I'm f so fixated on the meatballs now. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck. You know what? Forget uh, the money. I just want meatballs. Get the mighty knot out of your goddamn ears. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. My aunt Patsy, God, God rest her soul, <laughs> left me five grand. She used to make <laughs> everything she made was fucking incredible, man. Really? <laughs> Just meatballs and gnocchi. Fucking. She made her own gnocchi. She didn't make her own, but but she would make it the way I liked it. Yeah, I love gnocchi so much. I know. Oh, so much. I wish there was a fast food late night gnocchi I know, store man. around here. Uh, how do you say it? Gnocchi. 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 Yeah, I call it in gnocchi. That's not right. Who are you to say? Somebody who has heard you mispronounce plenty of words. You sound like a deaf man saying yucky. When you say it, it you, <laughs> you sound deaf, but I don't... Yonky. Yonky. What Please, the might have saying? a second helping of yonky. <laughs> it's knocky, isn't it? That I think that's the uh, Metagon version well, of the, it. Oh, okay. So we're going to we're going to have to get them or we're going to go to the restaurant and we're going to say them separately. And we'll see which one the waiter smacks. <laughs> he smacked all of us. What the hell just happened? It's called ravioli, dickhead. <laughs> Danny, do you have an opinion on the Yonki debate? I am I'm terrible at this. He's got the Polish blood. He's... I've yeah, I've called it Noki. Yeah, that's, that's Polish. Closer to correct than yeah. either of you two. Yeah, I'm more about the pierogi. Same uh, thing. Yeah. Yonki is not a filled pasta. Yeah, it is. Dan, can you mute no, his mic not. anytime he's about to say that word? <laughs> yeah, it's got potato in it. Yeah, yeah. it has potato. No, it's made of potato. It's, no, it's not no, filled with it's anything. Filled with, it's filled it's in, with potato. inside. Yeah. No, it's not. I've made plenty of gnocchi in my day. <laughs> Dude. And it is, this is not getting more offensive every time you say it. Filled. Dude, maybe you have to thing. sign it to him. <laughs> no, I got gonna... something for you to sign. <laughs> it's a f it's four, four inches, inches. <laughs> and it's uh, my mother loves it. <laughs> and that, if you're out there, you mother. <laughs> I wish I could tell people about it's you, coming. you and they'll, Annette Rainey. They'll learn. It's a com. It's a common. <laughs> it's now it says that it's in the Dumplin family, which would mm -hmm. imply. That it's a that it's pasta. something stuffed into. The oh. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe sometimes it's filled, but it is not a by definition filled pasta. You guys are familiar with the five dumpling families of New York City. <laughs> <laughs> is this one, another one of those things that the the Chinese are claiming they created? I know. Stop. I'm not going. You know, I'm not going hate crime here. I'm just there. A couple years ago, it was revealed that like the Chinese created like all Italian food. Oh wow! Noodles for sure. Um, Clams Casino, I think. What? Yeah. Uh, Scungili. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have to say this because it made me laugh so much. But um, yesterday, or, yeah, yesterday when Naeem Ali was on Dad Meat, we asked him what he thinks that Asian people find funny, and he said improper equations. <laughs> 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 Dude, he's the man. <laughs> I want to hear him pronounce gnocchi. Oh, God. Yeah, he would probably nail it. You say it again. Gnocchi. You haven't, you haven't said it in a while. Gnocchi. <laughs> you Dude. added another syllable. Gnocchi. He is so wrong. Are you going to play it by a computer? Yep. yep. Is, it a, is it a robot or an Italian woman? Oh, yeah, you should probably do a YouTube video. Are you going to have dictionaries? Uh, I'd I'll, I'll like to hear gnocchi. more. Gnocchi. Oh. One more time. Gnocchi. Exactly how I'm saying it. 
Yoki. That's guys, what I've been saying. Dude, you guys have been fucking laughing like three stooges over here for like the last ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you Yoki. say it. You've been saying in Yoki. In Yoki. Danny, can we hear her? <laughs> this is Yoki. In Yoki. There, there's a little linger on the front. One more time, please. Yoki. Gnocchi. It's, it's not an, it's, it starts with an N, not an I or a vowel. John, it's, you're very close to getting called. Something <laughs> that starts with an N has the second letter as an I. Yeah, that doesn't sound like gnocchi to me. <laughs> Man, that sounds like something I would moan in my sleep. <laughs> gnocchi. gnocchi. It sounds like <laughs> I'm back the to robot. Magic, yeah. Gnocchi. <laughs> now, gnocchi. when it's spelled, uh, you know, like, so you can pronounce it, it's N Y O W. Gnocchi. N-Y-O. Gnocchi. You're changing the way you... Gnocchi. <laughs> Gnocchi. Gnocchi. All right, we're going to an Gnocchi. Italian restaurant. All right. Sometime soon. And we're going to... Not Olive Garden. Either. And we're going to film you ordering. And all right, let's all fucking do it. fucking laugh in your face when you do it. I can't fucking wait. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. That is a pronunciation you have not said. In Yoki. <laughs> I've been saying it the same Changed the whole fucking it time. Immediately. No. Danny, he is changing it. That was two different pronunciations. <laughs> Jake, can we get a Yoki from you? You know what? <laughs> I'm still I'm sticking to my guns. Yoki. No. Well that's been already proven wrong. All right. Mike, you are saying two clearly different words. In Yoki. <laughs> I'm not going Yoki. I'm not doing that. All right. Okay, you just said in Yoki. No, I said gnocchi. Why did people make such a stink about ordering Starbucks when this is how you say gnocchi the whole time? What? Like everyone was like, I was, I don't like want to say grande? venti. Yeah, they don't want to say that. But oh. then, but then because they, they changed the names of medium, gnocchi, large, and small. Yeah, and that's a this noodle. Is, that's a, a little. It's the noodle known noodle. by the name gnocchi. It's only got gnocchi. one <laughs> in gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, I'm starting to get the fucking <laughs> gnocchi giggles. Yes. <laughs> One more time. Gnocchi. That was right. Gnocchi. Uh, no, that was different. It's not different. It's the same fucking thing uh, coming out of my mouth every time. You've been saying gnocchi and then in gnocchi. Gnocchi. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not hear saying it differently? Gnocchi. Gnocchi. That was less. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. <laughs> Gnocchi. That's how I pronounce it. John, smack him on the back. I think he's joking. <laughs> Thank you. What if he spit out an gnocchi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was a, it was a filled pasta. Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> Still frozen. <laughs> yeah, my Aunt Pat, God rest his soul. <laughs> yeah, she used to, oh, God, I used to love this too. I just remember this. She would make me uh, rice with uh, mixed in with gravy. You know what? I don't know if I've ever had that, but it sounds like it would be fucking oh, it's, delicious. It's such a simple, delicious. I meal. love rice. And I, I just love too. gravy. Wow. Yep. So, like gravy, gravy, or Italian gravy. Oh yeah, one gravy, Jake. Mm. All right, okay. That sounds like hey, brown turkey. You know what? Gravy you just remind. Well, how would how would Craig say it? Ooh, I forgot about Craig. Yeah, how would Craig say it? Who's huh? Craig? From uh, the uh, Menendez brothers. Craig but Spigaroli or whatever his name is. Oh, uh, uh, Ma, we got these two quasi for jeans over here, yelling about the pronunciation of Enyoki. <laughs> yeah, the one saying that like a fucking deaf mute. <laughs> how, how would Miss Gladys say it? I don't even. But then, <laughs> we got no time, time for no damn Enyoki on uh, on Neptune, Jake. <laughs> I was surprised there wasn't an S at the end of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ganachis. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck, I missed it. God damn it. <laughs> wait, I can get it back. <laughs> oh, wait, she's coming back. <laughs> Ain't nobody got no time for damn, no, no, no damn Ganachis on fucking Neptunes. <laughs> you suck on these good nuts. <laughs> <laughs> she sure is foul mouth. Man. Well, she works close. constantly, Jake. What do you want from the lady? I understand it. She's burning the candle at both ends. She needs to, you know. Take a little me time. Bathtub. Yeah, yeah, I might could treat myself to Olive Gardens every one of these days. <laughs> you know they give you unlimited breadsticks and unlimited cheese, too. I've seen your purse, Miss Gladys. When you come over with that cheese grater, I just divert eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you ever said when? Mm -mm. (laughs) I'll never say when. (laughs) Have you ever uh, done that? Not say when? Um, I've definitely made them make my soup disappear. (laughs) 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 I can still see some broth right there. Let's cover up that spot. Yeah. I always do chill, 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 chill. <laughs> <laughs> to make them panic. <laughs> I, dude, I would always that's get it. Great. That's a good life bit, dude. <laughs> that is a good life bit. Uh, I've had it two ways where a lot of times they just stop and they're mm. like, are you sure? Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> There's no way I should go past yeah, this level. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah. And I'm like, keep going. <laughs> or I've had, I've had a couple where they like, all right, bitch, like, let's see how far you, we can go with this. And they're just, <laughs> they're calling for a refill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a guy feeding in the cheese like it's a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Jake's got a helmet on when they back to him. <laughs> they're bringing it in on the cardboard boxes that come in on the hand truck just next to the table, just six boxes of cheese. God. Yonky. And Yonky. Yonky. All right, so we're going to have to find out. (laughs) Yonky. The fact that you think you're saying what the computer is saying makes me know that you had a night in the loony bin. (laughs) (laughs) Are computers always right? Pretty much. Oh, pretty much isn't certain. (laughs) All right, you got me there. (laughs) Yonky. Yonky. Sounds like you're saying one individual Yonky and Yonky. Hey, how would Gilbert Gottfried say it? <laughs> <laughs> how would Donald Duck say it, motherfucker? <laughs> oh, God. No, don't do this to me. I'm so ashamed. I haven't met with my Donald Duck impersonator coach yet. God, I said I was going to do it so long ago, and I never ended up doing it. We thought you were going to do it at Disney. Yeah, we went to the goddamn source. Oh, my God. I'm such an asshole. We got you that Donald Duck suit and everything. I fucking hate myself. (laughs) I can't believe we didn't see him. Yeah, he wasn't around. He saw Mike coming. That's what it was. (laughs) (laughs) He buried his head in the lake. There's the guy that told Pluto about all the fucking (laughs) Perkins. What a sweetheart, man. That was a genuine hug that Pluto gave me when yeah, I told him my Yeah, that was a genuine like, hug that you received. Yeah. It was real. <laughs> Yoki. And Yoki. Were we talking about this? The amount of training they must receive about all the fucked up things that get said to them? Uh, I mean, what are they supposed to be trained in? Shoulder shrugs and shutting the fuck up? They're not allowed to say anything. You think Pluto's biting people? (laughs) I mean, it would be a different story if you went up to, let's say, Belle and did that. Mm -hmm. You know, she would have to respond with some kind of verbal... Oh, I would put that bitch of service to the test. <laughs> oh, my God. You got knocked out of line. Yeah, you were in line for Bell, and then... They kicked me out. You looked like <laughs> such a fucking weirdo. They were like, ah, Bell's got to use the bathroom until that guy leaves. <laughs> yeah, there's a line of little girls, and Mike's at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, Bell's got to take a shit, and Bell's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a conga line of children with Mike at the end. Damn, I should have went full beast and kidnapped Dude, that bitch. The, they saw you come, and she walked over and said something to you, and I remember walking up to you. I'm like, what did they, what did they say? <laughs> you said, they said, Bell's got a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you never want to be talked to by a Disney employee. Yeah. <laughs> I say, you know, you're you're effing up. We got we got a nice one, though. I think he was sweet on John. Oh, yes, you what guys did. Name? Oh, dude, well, we got so much information out of that guy. I'm pretty sure he told me stuff I wasn't supposed to know. Yeah, Danny, he put information Me in and you. Danny were watching this Sean. happen. Yeah, he was... High and you up, and once you brought out that map, yeah, I mean he sprinted to you, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I like he went from that was like good service. He saw your habanero red vest and was like, "Is he? I think he might." Be. And then you put out the thing, and just the confidence level. Yep, on. he's a lost gay guy. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's trying to find the cock. There's actually a very good documentary called Lost Gay Guys of Bucks County as well. If you guys want to check that out on Amazon Prime, <laughs> what was that documentary on? Do you remember? I believe I saw it on the back of your mother's gooch. Oh, my God. The gooch? Mm -hmm. Had a projector pointed at and everything. Damn. (laughs) That surround sound in that pussy and everything. Oh, my God. I guess I I I deserve that for asking an innocent question. What is a gooch? I watched it on Amazon Prime. (laughs) 
I don't believe anything you say now. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed up for Peacock again just so I can watch Casey Anthony. Yeah. And I came in to watch the rest tonight. Did the, all the episodes come out at one time? They did, yeah. So it's basically I, like one three-hour documentary. Yeah, I don't get why they do that because, man, you build three weeks worth of buzz if you spread it out. True. This will be people don't want to wait. Flamed out, but fuck people, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be. I, I should start a Netflix and just put out shit when I feel like it. <laughs> it's called Mike's schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. People like to have their routines, man. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Have they shown the um the the old club slash uh, Mediterranean restaurant that we went to in the documentary at all? That would be a nice plug for that place where you got some food. The lady invited. They did not. Uh, they showed her house, her boyfriend's apartment, the jail where she was staying, hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've seen so far. I watched the first two episodes out of three. How many uh, talking heads are there besides her? Uh, some of her legal team, some of her. Um, Psychiatrist, psychologist, a former cellmate. Detectives. A the guy who shared the apartment with her boyfriend was there. The parents aren't in it. They're showing footage of the parents and like you see them like melting down during I think it was like an A and E special they did. Yeah. They're arguing about money. Yeesh. I mean, yeah, I can't blame them for not wanting to get back in front yeah. of the camera crew. <gasps> Remember how the dad wanted to be a Disney character? What if he was Pluto that I talked to? Oh. oh. Was he a short lord? No, he seems like a regular man. Handsome guy. He looks like, uh, what's the guy from uh, from Seinfeld that does B-101 shit? Jake John. Peterman? Yeah. 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 yeah whatever. John Haggerty, whatever the fuck his name is. Playing whatever yeah. the hell we feel like. <laughs> that sounded nothing like him. <laughs> no, that sounded, I mean... Uh, it sounded better than your Donald Duck. Thing. Elaine. 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 <laughs> In lane. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys pronounce it? <laughs> and ling. <laughs> How do you say Newman? <laughs> Newman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stay adding G's to my words. <laughs> Yonky. And Yonky. Naki. What are, what are the, put your pronunciations in the uh, comments <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what other food you guys like? <laughs> Tonight I'm about to like a uh, enchorito. Oh, what is that? You gotta give me one. It's like a burrito. Get you one. Yeah, well, and give it to you next week. <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna follow you. Put it in there. the freezer. <laughs> you can get it yourself. I don't have the app. I don't want to download the app. I'll download the app for you. With weirdo. your pay information? What is the hack? Like, you, you just use Apple Pay. I don't have Apple Pay. Well, then you're not getting a fucking Anchorito, Jake. I don't know what to tell you. God, <laughs> damn, <right? laughs> I'll Venmo you for the thing. And then where you're going to park next to me? <laughs> and I'm going to hand you the yeah, fucking Taco Bell through the park window. Park like cop cars when they deal. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I thought we could do. A little cop car. A little yeah, that, Starsky and Hutch. That mm. would be kind of fun. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll do it. Man, I'm fucking starving. I might go with you. But the Entorito costs fifteen dollars. So you know. <laughs> you <fucking laughs> it's like you're trying to sell me drugs. I'm like, this is really what it costs, right? I yeah. think you might be able to order it not on the app. Perhaps we'll figure it out. We got time. Last night I couldn't. <laughs> All right, you guys want to say anything before we go? Um, Yaki, Jake. If you're in the Philadelphia area, come to Punchline Comedy Club uh, New Year's weekend. I'll be there. All weekend with Giannis Pappas and a couple Ooh. other local comics. Oh, very it's nice. going to be a great time. Bring in the new year with your old friend Cal Dun Yunky. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, uh, you know what? Leave a mean comment on my uh, special on YouTube, a soft one. <laughs> just go just ahead. Just for the visibility? Just, I need, I really need, I'm trying to get it to 40,000 views. How and, close are you? I'm like, Less than 500. Oh, Jake. So, you know. You had a hell of a year on Spotify, it looked like. That, that was cool. That was pretty nuts. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So keep, just whenever you go to sleep, turn down your volume and just keep playing it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you guys so much. That's all I want to say. No, on perks. Get your copy. Yeah, it's going to be shipping very soon as well. 
Um, I should have copies within the next two weeks, man. It's taken fucking forever, but finally light at the end of the tunnel, and I will have it. So thank you to everybody who's ordered. You can order go to ownperks.com. Um, yeah, I think you're going to fucking love it. Yeah, you you got an audio book. You're screaming slurs into the books, dude. The it's, fucking audio book is fucking unhinged. Everybody has fucking come through and just knocked it out of the park. And it's not just people reading shit that's in the book. People are adding their own observations, you know, shit that they, I don't know, just anything they want to say at 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 the time where they record it. I think that's right going to be a. Uh, I think you're you're creating a new kind of audio book experience by doing this. I think this is like a very one of a kind thing that you have going on. I believe so too. Thank you, John. The fact that it's not just the red version of the book, Mm -hmm. it's got so much more to it. I think think you're changing the game, honestly. Thank you very much. And uh, if you guys have time after we're done recording next time, maybe you could record something. Absolutely. Cool. I'd love to. All right. But yeah. Yeah, buy the book. And uh, more importantly, I love you guys so much. I love y'all too. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Yonky. Don't you fucking dare. (laughs) 